Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, karibuni tena. Uh, this is Trukana TV coming to you live from Kanam Woods. Uh, we've been telling you about Kanam Woods is one of the best places in town. Just opposite Safari Club. If you want to have fun with your loved ones, with family, this is the right place for you to come and hang out. They have delicious food. Their chef, Naskia Meimpotiwa, is a nice guy. Food yao ni top notch. And uh, it's a place that everybody who've never been to Lord or Akifika anakuwa mesmerized. So we are coming to you live from Kanamuds. And today, we are privileged, as we told you yesterday, that we are privileged to host one of the most celebrated elites, a professional, a father, a brother, a bishop, a religious person, uh, one and only Dr. Malcolm Charles Lochodo. And uh, he has an announcement that he want to give us. And we also have to know the story of Daktari, how he came to be. Uh, one of the most respected person, a reputable businessman. He's been all over the world. Now, we want to get wisdom kutoka kwake. Uh, without further ado, karibuni tena. For those who are joining us now, we are coming to you live from Kanam Woods. Alakaranoi, they call me Sultan Loala Nyangalima. And this is Trukana TV. Karibu sana, daktari. Thank you. Karibu, thank karibu you. sana. Thank you. thank you. I'm happy you're here. Uh, we've been trying to see when you talk snatch, to kulete. But uh, I think this is the right moment for you to be here. Karibu sana, daktari. Uh, kuna watu wengu na ulizanga when we post you, for instance, when we put a photo of you, you trend. We, we see on our trend, unafika almost 40,000 rich. People are like, man of God, a uh, good man, mtu mzuri. So it goes us interested. We wanted to know, ni sisi ndia tujui daktari, ju watu wengu wana comment good things about you, and we are, you hosting us here. We wanted to know now, Hii uzuri ya daktari ni gani? Uh, karibu sana. Uh, as we start, who is Dr. Malcolm Charles Lochodo? Thank you very much, uh, Turkana TV. First and foremost, allow me to thank you for having me in this show. It's my first time to be in this show. Um, and then again, I just want to, to wish all my friends, uh, friends of Turkana TV, uh, happy Easter holiday. And uh, this is a very memorable day for all of us. It's the day that our Lord Jesus Christ is risen and uh, is no longer again in the grave. So he's with us. So again, thank you very much. Um, just to get back to your question, who yes. is Dr. Malcolm Lochodo Charles? My daughter likes calling me Lochodo. <laughs> he, she doesn't like calling me Malcolm. And I have never understood why she doesn't like calling me Malcolm. Wow. When I asked her before my graduation, what name would you prefer calling me? She told me Dr. Lochodo. So I will always prefer to be called Dr. Lochodo. Lochodo. Because I love that Trukana name. Yes. It's a brand in its own. So I love it. So um, who is Dr. Lochodo? Dr. Lochodo is a family man. Uh -huh. He's a religious man. Oh. He's, um, he's an author. I've also published some, doc some things in the, in the web. You can check and Google wow. about more about me. Um, I am a man who has traveled, traversed the world. Wow. I have more than 18 years um, experience in my career. I've been all over the world. When, wow. when uh, South Sudan was still in war, I was there. When the food was uh, bubbling and boiling, I was there. Wow. And then I moved down to Uganda where I served for uh, three and a half years. I was there in Uganda as a, a country manager in Uganda. Wow. And then I moved to London where I, I served for Save the Children UK wow. uh, before I was deployed to Kenya to support uh, Somalia, South Sudan, Kenya program. And then from there, I moved to uh, an NGO called Adesso, uh, where I was again uh, a regional uh, manager there in that NGO. And then that's where I called it a day. I decided to get back home and concentrate now in business. Wow. Um, many people want to know my academic background. True. Um, 
And this is, let me say this to those young people who are outside there. You can get to where you want to be at any given time. You do not have really to labor and say, no, I must get an A, I must get a B for me to be where I am. Mm -hmm. you, you can be there. And this is a story that I want to tell you. That I, I am not really that kind of a person you might say, I am, uh, I am an A grade. No, mm -hmm. I am not. Mm -hmm. I am just a simple person. And let me tell you this story, because most of you do not know me very well. When I finished my high school, that was in 1992, I think, yeah, that was 1992, um, I, I actually wanted to go and become a pastor. Um, I went to South Africa uh -huh. uh, with um, a group called uh, Service Year for Christ. I trained in, in uh, Uganet College in South Africa. I got back to Kenya, served for one year, wow. uh, moving around East Africa. I went to, I was in Kenya, I was in Uganda, I went to Tanzania. Then, uh, fortunately, I also went to Rwanda during the genocide. I was there in Rwanda. Ministry. In 1994? Yes, I was there in Rwanda. Wow. Then when I came back, now it was my turn to go to South Africa to do, pursue my theology. Unfortunately, things didn't go well. Then uh, I got back to Kenya. I went to South Africa. Then I was sent back to Kenya. Then I went to a reformed theological college for my theological classes. Mm -hmm. I only went there for one semester, and then I, I quit. Um, actually, it was like... I was running away from the reality. Wow. Yeah? I just decided to leave. Then I went to Lokichogyo looking for jobs. And this is where now my life began. Okay. And uh, many people see me as if I'm a well-made up man. But let me tell you young people today watching at me that the man you see here was a loader. A man who was carrying goods from emptying a truck and putting them in a store. Wow. That was my job. And I was earning, I was being given a token of 100 shillings a day. Wow. And, uh, and I'm happy I'm talking here while some of the guys who are there with me, they're in this hall today. And they can attest to what I'm telling you. That from there is where now this man was met. And, and I really want to thank a lady whom I believe one day a lawyer and I. Sarah lawyer and I. Lawyer and I. Uh -huh. Many people know her. I think she's now with the Chamber of Commerce in Turkana County. Uh -huh. And I really want to thank this lady from the bottom of my heart. Because this is the lady who saw the man called Malcolm. And she tried to help me. She tried to get me to UN in Lokichogyo, OLS camp, so that I can get these small jobs. This is early 90s. This is early 90s. So I was there, and uh, she helped me. And then from being a loader, I became a barman. Wow. Yeah? This, wow. is, this is a story that none of you know. <laughs> I was in charge of a bar. There was a pub there called um, LMCS. LMCS. Yes. Lokichogyo Multipurpose something. Yes, there was a pub there, a well-known yeah. pub. And everyone could go there hanging out with you, their chicks. Eh? And they could come there. And then I was the manager there. Wow. Actually, I was the one selling all those beers to these people. And, and I sold it. And I have no shame to tell you that I, can I sold it. And it is there now that I met a lady by the name Sanjay. Sanjay. She, yes. She was working for ACROSS, Association of Christian Resource Organization Serving Sudan. Okay. This lady came. I saw her. I saw a white woman standing beside the road and she called me. Charles, Charles. Then I was like, where on earth will a Muzungu know me? <laughs> then I went to her because I'd forgotten about her. It was many years when I was still a young man in Lokichar where I grew up. Okay. That was my, that's my home media, my hometown. And I saw her. And then she called me and told me, aren't you Charles? Then I told her, yes, I'm Charles. Are you not the son of Mary? Then I told her, yes, my mom is called Mary Najula. Okay. And I said, oh. Then I was like, who are you then? She told me, yeah, I am Senje. I used to work in Lokichar as a nurse at Lokichar Health Center. Wow. Then I told her, wow, now I can't remember you because I was young by then. Mm -hmm. Then that is how I got connected. That is how I got my first employment without an interview. And this is where God comes in. God worketh in different ways. True. And this is where I got my first employment without an interview. I was just told, go and get us your CV, get us your passport. 
and your then ID and your all ID. That. Then I came to Lodwa. Then I did all these things. I took to her. The following day, I was on the plane to South Sudan, a, pl a place called uh, Akobo. Akobo. Yes. You know, I've been to Sudan. I went to all the nine states. I've been to Akobo. Akobo is upper north. Yes. And uh, it's a place where when it rains, you have to wait until when the rainy season ends. Now, the experience that most of us and our teenagers look up to, they say, I cannot get a work, I cannot, I cannot go look. For. They're telling us from nowhere, you just got a job and you are now being taken from Kenya all the way to South Sudan. How long did you stay in Akobo? I stayed in Akobo for one and a half years. Wow. Um, the way I came out of Akobo was Akobo was a bit insecure. True. And there were a lot of attacks. And then we were evacuated from Akobo. Mm -hmm. That's how I came out of Akobo. Okay. Then, uh, but I love the place. I, I love the Nuer people. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful people, lovely people. And uh, I, I really admired being with them. And I learned a lot from them. Because being the first uh, place for me to work outside my hometown... It was really lovely to be among the Nuer people. Wow. So you, you stayed along with the guys after being repatriated back to Kenya. Um, uh, you changed the job now that you've got already, you have a good job, and you've come back, you've been repatriated back to Kenya. Did you go for further education or what happened in between that? When I came back from Akobo, uh, because I loved working with the cross, <laughs> being, being seen that... Uh, they can invest in a young man like me. Yes. A man without experience. Because they were being asked, you need to have experience. True. And here I didn't have any experience. But they had, they saw that there is this potential in this young man. Yes. And then they invested in me. So I worked with Akobo until uh, around 1998, uh -huh. about two years down the line. Uh -huh. I left Akobo. I left across, I mean. Then I joined an organization called VSF Belgium. VSF Belgium. I, I never really served them for that long. <laughs> I, I think now I, I realize that I was potential. Mm -hmm. I just served them for about uh, four months. Wow. And then from uh, working with uh, VSF Belgium, I joined, uh, I joined Oxfam yeah, now GB. They, yes, Oxfam GB. Yes. This is now where I, I, I really uh, built up my career. Wow. In Oxfam, when I started working with Oxfam, is when now I saw the need of me going back to school. Okay. A diploma. By yeah. then, by that uh -huh. time, I did uh -huh. my diploma. The Kenya Institute of Social Work and Community Development. Uh -huh. They were very good by then. And I think they are still even good up today. Because I think just a few uh, months ago, I got in touch with them. I just wanted to catch up with them. To yes. get to know if they are still there existing. Uh -huh. Then I, I had a nice chat with them again. So I did my diploma there. Then uh, I did a graduate diploma. Cambridge Association um, a College. Mm -hmm. And then after that, now I did a certification in what we call humanitarian logistics. That's a very high class kind of certification if you really want to work in the NGO world. In the NGO world. So I did that one. And I, 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 I left a record there. Wow. Because I did it in the shortest time possible. I'm, I'm yet to go back to the uh, archives and see if, if there's, there's a person who has, if broken, there's, there's that record. Who has broken that record. <laughs> because, uh, but I left a record there. I did it in less than one year. Wow. Uh, and I completed and I really uh, passed very well. Then now, uh, when I left them, uh, is when... Now, you're going to Dafur as a VCA, uh, VSF individual or another job? I am now going to Dafur with Oxfam. With Oxfam. But before, before I went to Dafur, and then I came to Kenya during the IMOP. Uh -huh. I don't know who knows IMOP. I don't know which year was that. Uh, that was when the emergency was at the peak in Turkana County. Okay. I requested a redeployment from South Sudan to, to Turkana. To Turkana. Wow. And then uh, I was lucky enough. I got that opportunity to come and work for my people. The people I love most called the Turkana people. So when I came to Turkana, I really served them well. And uh, three or four. 2004. Mm -hmm. When an opportunity came in, in, in Darfur, I applied for that job because it was an international position. True. So when uh, Oxfam interviewed me, then they offered me the position. But you know, the Janjaweed in Darfur, at that time, Darfur was one, I, there's a time it was ranked one of the most uh, unsafest places on earth after Afghanistan. Getting to know that you went to Darfur, 
how did you work how how, how was your work experience there now that kuna watu wabaya huko like the janjaweeds who are even worse than al shabab how did you work how how was your work relationship with the, the indigenous wa huko the government the ngo because i am told when a person is being taken to darfur if an ngo picks you and takes you to darfur places like darfur they know you are a person who will deliver and a person who has a heart and a courageous person because going there even now we can be we need to go do a live stream in darfur i'll have to think twice yeah it's it's very interesting to hear you talk that way because um darfurians are very good people they enjoyed working in was in darfur yes the people in darfur the 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 the, the, the sudanese in darfur are lovely people and they're welcoming people uh-huh. if you learn their culture uh-huh. you they will embrace you yes and my life in darfur was one of the the, the most enjoyable uh, working environment uh-huh. i am a goal getter i i do and i get to what i intend to get you set a goal and i have it. to achieve it wow and my intention was when i landed in darfur i said these are these people are here and i have to work with them True. i worked in two locations in darfur by the way uh-huh. i worked in a place called uh, el fasha that's in in in, in, uh, in north darfur uh-huh. and then i moved to nyala that's in in uh, no i think that's nyala that's uh, i worked el fasha is in north and then nyala is in south okay so i worked in both locations so i had an experience of working in both locations uh-huh. in fact working in the in the most the highly populated uh, refugee camp was in nyala wow and and this is where i, I think uh, my my career took a turn when now i learned that um, the dafurians are the the most hospitable community i learned to a few of the their language mm-hmm. that's the arabic mm-hmm. i could dress like them yes i could eat with them yes. i could attend all the weddings in in darfur in darfur in darfur and believe me you the people my colleagues who work with me in oxfam will attest to you never even a single day my team from oxfam were either attacked on the way mm-hmm. or we were ambushed on the way or anything bad or evil did happen to them none none both in north and south what could I, you know, i'm trying to imagine that yeah it's because i i i developed a strategy okay. where i had to befriend the dafurians aha uh-huh. and i could get what i wanted to get i was well informed of any movement that's taking place in that land i could get to know where the attacks are likely to happen wow. so and i could advise my team because i was also in charge of security uh-huh. i could advise my team not to go east or west and in so doing uh-huh. um i think i was i got highly recognized by even by the un wow because they were like what is really happening with you how come that your team is safe i said nothing <laughs> because that was my secret. Wow. How do you want me to tell you my secret? True. And I said nothing. And and I had a lovely time with them. By the time I left Darfur, yes. Even today, I still have Darfurians who are following me on my on my uh, Facebook account. Uh-huh. I mentored two young people in Darfur. Yes. Two Sudanese. Yes. And uh, currently they are both working international. Two of them. Two of them. When I moved to uh, when I came from Darfur to Kenya I was redeployed to Uganda Now this is where I stayed for another 4 years in Uganda as a country manager logistics country manager in Uganda Then I took these two young men from Darfur because I saw the potential in them True I wanted to mentor them I was given that opportunity You But also have to give it back Yes I wanted to give back I brought a guy called Muktar and a guy called Osman Mukhtar ended up being a, a very busy, a very senior man with Oxfam still even today he's, he's earning a lot of money than I earn today <laughs> I'm telling you I I just had a chat with Osman I think last month yes he was in Ethiopia still works with the, still, 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 still in the NGO world still in the NGO world man a very nice young man he's now a is now a logistics advisor for Oxfam 
Wow. He's a very big man. I wow. think he's earning a lot of money. I should ask him to donate some for me. Uh, he needs also to he donate has, some for us. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good friend. And um, you know, what am I trying to say? Yes. That if you are a man who has a heart to help, you can still help. True. I help these young men. I mentor them. Uh -huh. And when I saw the potential in them, yes. I moved them with me. And now they are all over the world. They are international. I believe if we go ahead and invest in our young people, they can still do better than we can do. Very true. They are better than they are doing better than I do right now. They are earning more money than I can be able to earn today. And I'm so proud of them. And that's a blessing. Thank you. That is that is something, Dr. Malcolm, that most of our people lack. Especially when you come to Turkana, we have potential. We have so many guys who can do good. But just because we have this bureaucracy thing and uh, selfishness that we don't want to empower others, um, and if, if they are not a part of us, you cannot empower them. That is, that is the thing that if you look around Lodwa and Turkana as a whole, you'll find the young men that are here are busy chasing politicians. We are busy in chest thumping for politicians. We are becoming psychophones of these politicians for us to get something out of it. Yet, the politicians are the ones who are supposed, or the leaders who are around us, are supposed to empower us the way you did. Now you see, you've taken, you, you took two guys who are now international staff for Oxfam, and they're making money out of it. Mark you, they are from Darfur. You can imagine. A place that most of us have been told is crazy than anything. Uh, to me, I'll tell you, Daktari, that's a blessing. You have a bigger heart. It's very few people who can do that. Very few. Out of 100, maybe you. The other 99, Akuna. And that is something that I've been admiring on you on a personal level. I come here, I do things, I see the way you manage things, the way you micromanage things, the way uh, some of the young guys who look up to you. Every time you sit with them, they tell you, Daktari is a man who is on another planet. Daktari is not from Earth. You have a bigger heart. Uh, just last year, I know I did my research. Just last year, you gave land. You gave land to around 50 youth. Nobody, no mainstream media knows this. Not, not even us. Nobody has ever posted that. Not even in the newspapers. Nobody in Trukana knows that Malcolm gave land to 50 young guys. Ingekuwa ni mimi? Hai, Trukana TV ningeweka kila mahali. And, and, and that is one thing that makes you look different, Daktari. We are young guys who look up to you. And for you to show that gesture, I am telling you that that gesture made me change the whole mindset, the whole perspective of who you are. Because Abu Zaman will go and ask you and say, ah, Daktari, ah, daktari ya kona maringo. Daktari ya tokiona venya na tembea, ni kama kona maringo, ni kama ajui watu. But, this is me telling these people who are watching us. Any person out there who have never interacted with you, or a person that have never seen what you've done. And an example is that you gave land. Now, how land is precious in Lodwa? You gave. What made you do that? Yeah, um, thank you, Lo Lo Sultan. Let me just correct you a bit. Okay. I think there are greater people outside there. I know. There are people there outside who can do better than I have done. In my own little way, okay. I did what I was able to do. Um, on the issue of mentorship, yes. um, I am also glad, I, without mentioning his name, because he might take me to court for mentioning his name, mm -hmm. because he has not given me permission. Yes. I also mentored a young man when okay. I came to Kenya mm -hmm. and I was working for Adeso, I, I took up a young man right from the university mm -hmm. in his internship program. And then uh, I started to mentor this young man. And then uh, people were calling him professor. They call him a professor because whatever I told him to do, 
he did it to precision. Very good. A very eloquent, articulate, Turkana young man. Yes. And this young man, uh, before I left my NGO world, uh -huh. uh, he got full employment with that organization. Wow. Today, he was working in Lodwa for some time, and today his back is working in Nairobi. Wow. I am sure wherever he is right now listening at me is just smiling and saying, <laughs> Tari, I wish you cannot mention my name. But yes. I really respect this young man because he's a down-to-earth young man. And I wish and I pray for him that God will really help him to get to where, to surpass where I was. True. I left when I was at a regional level. I believe he can even go elsewhere and become international. True. Where I, where I was before mm -hmm. I came back to, to Kenya. Yes. In Uganda, I mentored another young man called Kayomto. He's a very nice young man in the Uganda program. Uh -huh. I think it's just my nature to see that I, I grow other people True. and I want them to be better than I do. Um, back to this issue of giving. Um, I believe in giving and uh, not allowing people to know what I really give. Because I give because I, I love these people and I want them to better their livelihood. I want them to be better than me. Just a few years ago here in Lodwa, uh, during the COVID-19, yes. um, under the umbrella of uh, Restoration, Relief, and Development Agency, which I'm the founder, mm -hmm. uh, we supported um, more than 500 street children wow. with both food and uh, masks and also some other uh, commodities. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we had a talk with them about COVID, and uh, I was really glad to have impacted on them. Okay. Um, early this year, we did a program of reaching out to the elderly. I think this one went viral. Yes. Many people are aware about that. Um, and and uh, I, it's a passion in me that I have to reach these elderly people. The question I asked many people and myself, where are your elderly? Who is really taking care of your elderly people? And I want to challenge every young man who is watching at me today. Wherever you are seated today, who is taking care of your elderly people? Who is taking care of your mom and dad? You are in this city called Lodwa, but you've left them in the village. I want to challenge you today. Get back to that village and support these elderly people. They need you. True. They did a lot for you, and you have to go back and assist them wherever they are. To the issue of land. Indeed, land is, is a precious commodity for us. And they, they, someone was asking me, you mean you have that big land that you can be able to give out just like that? You know one thing? Freely receive, freely give. True. I believe that the Lord who provided for me will also provide for them. Really? And uh, I know that for me touching their lives, they will also touch other people's lives. True. And it, I challenge them that when God helps you, go out and help others. I do it because I do not want to be seen like I have more. No, I do not have. Come and sit with me and you realize that I do not have. But the little I have, I would share it out because that is the heart I have. And I will share it. It doesn't mat matter what I have or what I do not have. What I have is what I share. What I do not have, I ask God to provide. Kweli. Asante said, I want us to engage the online funds. Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing our, in our comment section is blowing up. Uh, it will be better if they see uh, we are also engaging them. I, as yes, if you start from Joe, you have a person here and I say my Victor Chili by saying Nikosi near Naposimoru, we are proud of you, Daktari. Steve Kize is saying amazing show. Say hi to Doctor live from Loropio, Learning Lions. You have Lokopes Senior, the second watching from Nakuru. Ian David, amazing show. K Jack Apollo watching from Nairobi, Kenya. Ederi, the fit king, watching from Nax, Vegas, a humble servant of God, keenly following. Shibibi, Shibaka, this is inspiring story. Uh, Mercy Bling, uh, may God bless you, man of God. Sesmo Sine is saying, amazing work. Former doctor, chief officer, MOH, wonderful experience, uh, and a powerful Kiongozi. I'm impressed with your current work at you are, have nurtured some boys there, giving them land to live. May God bless you, Daktari. You have Ahmed Hashi, my brother, Dr. Dal Dr. Malcolm. 
You have Lolepo Wycliffe, a very humble and eloquent man of God, Dr. Lochodo. You have Angeline Lokayun, I'm inspired by the servant of Most High God. Joel Tatoi, God bless you, man of God. Uh, Joel Tatoi is saying also he's watching. Uh, how many of locals have ever mentored? That's a question we'll come and talk. Uh, somebody by Chris is the one who's saying that. Then you have a person called Ikaru Lemkol Naskia ni Bishop Yakanisa Kutoka, Nigeria. <laughs> we, will, we will also talk about that. Mentorship is key, uh, is a key big obstacle lacking in our Tukana community. I'm so happy to hear Daktari did it selflessly. God's abundance, grace, and blessings be with him. You have Abraham, who is saying very eloquent. Uh, you have, you report, you reporter, you're talking more, give chance to our doctor. Don't no worry, doctor is here for two hours. Don't worry, don't worry, but doctor is here for two hours. We are trying to, you have Abraham Ekai says, he once gave me a fair to attend a cadet interview in Nakuru in 2006. God bless you, Daktari. Uh, then you have Ali Adan, great man. Alfoyo Loco, inspiration boy, uh, inspirational boy, Dr. Malcolm Charles. Uh, you have Yahya Abdi Botan, wow, very eloquent. Ezekiel Mayer, watching from Nair. There is, there is a lot of people who are here. Uh, as we, as, let, let me read the last comment then. Give you an opportunity. What one ataka kukuskia sana wana umechoka na sisi. You have a person by then, uh, Atachang Emoilo Ewoi, is a professional from your hometown. Uh, yes, watching Kinley while in Kapese. Then you have Hosea, who is saying, one of the solid, humble man of God of our time. May God always to abide with you. Asante sana. As, more, more are coming, more are coming. Most people are watching. Daktari, you see, you, 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 you may look at yourself as just this person who lives just around here, but you don't know the impact you're giving to our community. Just from what you're seeing, from what people are talking about, from what people are commenting, all over, every kind of persons, every, religiously, I'm even seeing Muslims are commenting on you. Daktari, what is this thing that makes people get attracted to you? Thank you. Uh, first, I, I want to, to appreciate our viewers who are watching us from all over the world. Yes. And, uh, and I see, you know, I said I don't want to mention the name of a person, but I've just seen him. Is there watching. So if I had mentioned uh. his name. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm happy, you know, I am happy because he's keeping the legacy. Wow. I, I am so impressed with this young man. And one day, I want, let me tell you right now, I don't want to see you being where you are. I want to see you grow and become a big man. You have someone to emulate. I was there with you. I, 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 took, I nurtured you. And you have followed the footsteps. Now grow from there and also help others. And that answers the question where someone was asking, what have you done to the locals? Yes. The young man is there. He can speak for himself. He is watching. He is watching. And he will answer He him. will answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> so that is exactly what, what I did when I got that opportunity to stay around and work with our people. And um, I, I really want to appreciate my Muslim brothers. And you've just asked me a question. What makes them be my friends? Yes. It's only one thing, love. Love is not loving the person you know. Mm -hmm. It's loving the person, not the person you do not even know. Someone who is not of your religious background. True. Someone who is there and also appreciates you and you appreciate him. True. And I really want to, to tell you, I have more than a thousand Muslim brothers who are my friends, including him. Including me. He's here. Yes. So I have so many of them, and I really appreciate them. Any times that I've, I've been in challenge, I've, I'm down, they always come for me, and I always go for them. True. And that's what I call love. True. And loving someone is not actually giving what you do not like. It's giving what you cherish more, True. what you love more. That is why, you see, when I give, I do not want to give 
something that is not of value to me. Mm -hmm. I give what is of value to me because I want you also to see that you are valued. True. Because if you give me something that you don't value, then you do not love me. Quelly. You need I need to love you because of who you are. Yes. Regardless of your inclination, whether you are there or are down there or up there. And I really want to thank this young man who say that uh, I assisted him once in his life. I pray that you've also done the same. 2006 must have been that far. That, long that time. Long time. I can't even remember. Long time. And I do without remembering. That's one thing. If I meet you and we interact, I do what I do. I do not want to do it just because I want you to reciprocate to me. No. I do it out of love. True. I don't want you to pay me back. It's my prayer that you go and help others. Really? So there's one thing that we never touched about my academia. Yes. When I was in Uganda, this is the time now it dawned on me that I have to go back to school. Mm -hmm. And this is another story that I want you to listen very keenly. Because while in Uganda, I did a master's program. So I'm a, a master's holder in uh, project management. That was my, my first master's. Mm -hmm. Then I did a second master's in uh, international relations and diplomacy. Mm -hmm. When I got back to Kenya, and this is where I want you to be very keen now to listen to this story, that you can be up there, yes. and then you are lacking something. Then you have to get to the bottom and then begin again. Who among you can swallow his pride and do what you are meant to do? Wow. When I was there up there, I came to Kenya, and I enrolled for my PhD program. I was admitted in the university of Kenya Methodist University to pursue my PhD program. Mm -hmm. So I began my PhD program. Um, immediately, I was done with my coursework. Yes. I applied for a certain position in a government institution. Mm -hmm. I wasn't shortlisted. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I asked myself, why wasn't I shortlisted? You remember I told you I'm a goal getter. Yes. I always want to get what I, I, I'm intending to get. This time around, I was not even shortlisted. Wow. So I asked myself, what could have been the problem? And I started to look around, to search what is the problem. Mm -hmm. I met this elderly man, a man of reputable character, yes. an academician, an elite of Turkana society, by the name Professor Lokuruka. A very humble man. man. A man whom I highly respect. And he told me this, swallow your pride. I was only seated with him. To be honest, no one knows, no one knows this story. It's only me and Professor Lokuruka who are aware. Perhaps he might have even forgotten. Wow. But when I met him, he told me, swallow your pride. Because I told him, I haven't been shortlisted. Then he told me, what is your level of education? I explained to him. Then he told me, in your academia, there is something missing. Wow. And I'm sure now everyone wants to know what was missing. The, the, the PhD thing. Or the what? PhD was there. Yes. The master's was there. Yes. The diploma was there. The graduate diploma was there. Uh, certification was there. But there was one thing which was missing. And this is one thing that is called a bachelor. A bachelor's degree. It wow. was missing. Wow. So the question is, how could you even go as far as pursuing a PhD and yet you don't have a bachelor's degree? That was the question. Wow. By the time I was doing my master's, I had a graduate diploma. So and you skipped? It was not actually skipping. Eh. In, some, in, in some countries, yes. when you have a graduate diploma, it's equivalent to a degree. Uh -huh. But now, in our academia, in our academic system in Kenya, yes. a bachelor's degree is very important. Yeah? Okay. And I'm telling you, young men outside there, do not waste your time skipping. Kindly pursue your academic in the right way. True. If you are supposed to do your bachelor's, go and do, do your it. bachelor's. Yes. There is no shortcut to this journey. Okay. I attempted and I discovered there was no shortcut. Wow. So when Prof told me that swallow your pride, indeed I swallowed my pride and I went back to school. For your bachelor's For degree. my bachelor's. <laughs> yeah? I, I took another three and a half years to complete my bachelor's. I failed like any other person. Uh -huh. You know, people think when you have a master's and a PhD, you'll never fail. I am a man who loves to fail and learn from my failures. So, in some of my courses, I used to fail. 
Because, you know, being an, an elderly person, an aged man, sometimes I wake up, I'm very busy with the children, I true, go there, true. then I, don't, I forget that I'm supposed to go to an exam room. Yeah. <laughs> then I just write to an exam room to sit for my paper, I write. Then I'm, I see, oh, you've got, you failed, you've got a D. So, yeah, you dust no, up I and said it's okay. Yeah? But I struggled. Okay. Then I completed my, my degree program. Uh -huh. Now, if you follow my academic career, it's all a done deal. I have my master's. Uh -huh. I have my degree. I have my graduate diploma. I have my PhD. To add on that, I am still a student even today. And many people do not know this. Wow. You know, some people, when you get you acquire certain education. You think you have done, gotten it all. I want to tell you, it is the beginning. Everything. It is just the beginning. Once you go there, now you creep for more knowledge. You need to get more. You need to learn more. Now, it was time for me now. I wanted to know more about religion. Okay. And I enrolled for a master's in uh, missions from the University of Africa International University in Kenya, mm -hmm. in a formerly known Negest. It's a reputable institution for training theologians. Okay. So I have just completed my coursework and I'm now writing my thesis. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I'm telling you, I'm writing on a very, very interesting area. Why are Trukanas converting into Islam? Yeah? I Somebody, want to know. you wanted to know. Uh, I love the fact that uh, somebody asked me of the same sent me when he saw us rotating the advert. He told me, uh, I love the fact that you are going to interview Dr. Malcolm. Dr. Malcolm is a reputable person, is a person that we respect mostly. But there's something that I came across with. Uh, him is trying to do a research on why the Trukanas are converting more into Islam. I said, I might ask or I might not ask. But if it comes up, which you've already brought it up, what are your findings? I'm, I'm yet really to, to conclude the research. Okay. I'm still at the preliminary of the research. Okay. I've gotten the feedback, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm now going to do the analysis mm -hmm. of, of the findings. Yeah. And once I get the findings, I'm going to share the findings. Because True. it's meant for all of us. True. But I want to assure my respondents, your names will not appear there. Because that will be an ethical issue in this Quite research. True. So uh, your names will not appear in that research. But it's very interesting. Reading the, find, the, the feedback is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Because they are telling me that they have passion for Islam. That is what they told me. That's what I've seen there. So for those who converted, mm -hmm. they were not coerced mm -hmm. for them to become Muslims. They, it was a personal choice. For them. For them to become Muslims. Yes. And there are some very interesting findings. I do not want to preempt the findings yes. until when now I you get the final, I final. get the final after the, doing the analysis. Yes. Because I also want to, uh, to, to correlate with what is in the Bible. Yes. I also want to know what does the Bible say about conversion. Yes. And comparing the two, I am not really trying to come in and say, there is a better religion than the other. Than the no, other. That is not my, my, my intention. True. My intention is actually to respect your religion and affirm to you that I'm not coming to convert you into Christianity. It is a personal choice for you to convert into Christianity. True. As it was a personal choice for you to for convert, you to convert into, Islam. into Islam. So that is it. Thank you. I, I love the fact that Daktari, now you find our religious leaders, both in the Islam and Christianity, are fighting one thing. And that is not what we used to see, what we used to hear, that there is differences between these religions. People have put that aside. I'm loving the fact that our religious leaders are fighting a common enemy, which is now the devil. We've now come to realize when we were trying to say which religion is good, which religion is good, you know, there's something that was going on. Our kids are falling into traps. You find some of them are not going to churches or mosques. They are trying to adopt lifestyles that are not there. Culturally, traditionally, you see everything is changing. And, and, and I had a conversation with one of our imams just recently. They said, now that you have a TV, we need you to start bringing 
pastors on board every Sunday. Let them come and preach. Then bring us on Friday. We preach. Then in between here, either Wednesday, bring uh, the two of us. We preach also to them. And that, that made me, I told them, I wish we had the resources to do that. We would have done that. It gave me the idea that just three weeks ago, we had uh, a big crusade happened in Lodo yeah. by one Dr. Peter Youngren. Mm -hmm. And he invited, he invited all the religious sect, the leaders, I mean leadership of the all religions in Trukana, including the Muslims. Uh, I was told even a part of Catholic were there. And I was at the venue, and so surprisingly, on a Saturday, a day before uh, the crusade concluded, they gave an imam an opportunity to preach. Yeah. And that imam came and started talking about us and Christianity, how we, how we intermingle, how we, how we are all a part and parcel of one God, one Abraham, one, one Jesus, for, us to be, for you to become a Muslim. You need to love Jesus. And that is exactly what I said even yesterday. Uh, if, you look at the, if you look at Quran itself, Jesus has been mentioned 25 times. More than even Muhammad. Muhammad has been named only four times and one time Ahmad. So I love the fact that you guys are trying to give us religion and not division in religion. Putting that aside... How did you come up to meet Prophet uh, T.B. Joshua? Yeah, Prophet T.B. Joshua. Um, Prophet T.B. Joshua is my father in the Lord. And uh, he's a man of God that I really loved and I really wanted to emulate him. I know I might not be able to reach where he has, uh -huh. he had reached, uh -huh. but I know that uh, the impact he's made in my life is great. And uh, I am a living testimony of who he is. Um, it was actually in uh, around 2000 and, um, was it 2019, 18, there, seven, 2017? Yes. When I was actually, um, and, and this is a personal story. Sometimes it's not good to share your personal stories, but because I, I'm, I am a man of God and I love God and I respect what God tells me to do, um, I, was, I was in my time of my life when I was down. Yes. And this time I had a, and I had a healthy problem. Okay. I was actually having a healthy problem, which uh, I've been attending and going to the hospital to see that I can be assisted. Okay. And this time I reached a point whereby I needed um, intervention, God intervention. Yes. And this is the time now it came to me that they, they were uh, many places for me to visit. Uh -huh. Prophet T.B. Joshua, I saw many people watching his, his, his television, Emmanuel, Emmanuel TV. TV. And I wasn't bothered. For a whole good year, people were watching Emmanuel TV in my own shop, in my own house. house. And I never bothered. Every time I would come, I would see them watching Emmanuel TV, and I would say, in Ukora, Ilia, Nigeria. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And that was it. I never bothered. Until I met this one man, uh -huh. and I'm not shy to mention his name. He's called um, Pastor Who? Uh, what's the name of the pastor? The name has just skipped me, but he's from Full Gospel Churches of Kenya. Yes. And it is good that I don't mention his name because he might learn in troubles with his, some of his leadership true, of the true, church. True. So I would rather not mention your name, sir. I will respect you. I met him. Uh -huh. And we were in the same class doing um, a course in the university. Then I found him watching something. And then I asked him, what is this you're watching? Then he told me he's a man of God called T.B. Joshua. Mm -hmm. Then I looked at it. I told him, can I have a look at it? Then he told me, yes. Then he gave me the link. He told me, go and Google Emmanuel TV. Then I went to my house. I Googled. I found Emmanuel TV. I started watching Emmanuel TV. Then I got glued to the TV. Now I started watching Emmanuel TV. Mm -hmm. Then from where I was seated, I was convinced and yes. convicted yes. that this is the right place. Now I started looking on how uh -huh. I can get to see a man TV Joshua. Then I traveled in, in 2017 yes. to Nigeria, uh -huh. to Synagogue Church of All Nations. 
And this is when I met the man of God, prophet T.B. Joshua. May his soul rest in eternal peace. May his soul rest in peace. And this is where now um, I went to uh, Manuel T.B. Uh, Scorn. Mm -hmm. They call it Arena of Liberty. The moment you step at the Scorn, believe me, you, I am a testimony. Whatever you had, whatever the problem you had, it all comes to an end in Jesus' name. It's just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait and, and, and see a man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua. Just by stepping there, you receive what you had asked for. If it's deliverance, you get delivered. If it's a breakthrough, you get it. For me, it was so unique. I received a touch from a man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, twice that day. When we were at the church mm -hmm. and when we were outside of the church, he prayed for me. Believe me, you viewers all over the world who are watching me today, I received that healing. Since that day, I have never been the same again. Many people who had a healthy condition like mine, mm. they are already gone. I only live by the grace of God. Amen. And I am not ashamed to tell you, I will serve this God. Until that day when he tells me, welcome home. Asante sana. That is, that is one unique story that most people have been wanting to know. How did it come to be Dr. Malcolm uh, met with T.B. Joshua. That is one thing, and I'm happy that it is out there. People will go watch and see and come through this clip and they will know more. Uh, I am told also that you have a church. And uh, this is something that I did my research. Because bringing you, I am still shocked that uh, Doctor, you do extraordinary things. You, during the last December, you had to go an extra mile. Forget about the land that you gave to the youth. You went an extra mile and made sure that each and every member of the church and the people that are nearby, people who are near to your church, had a good Christmas. That, that, is, that is one thing, this is one thing that keeps me glued. Is it because of the things you've said earlier or now that your heart is so much into now the religion part of it? Or is it that the church that you're leading, is it a must for you to do that? Thank you very much. Um, surely, it's not me doing it. It's God doing it. I take less pride in it because it's not all about me. True. It's all about God. I actually emulate what my dad in the Lord does. Uh, my father in the Lord is one thing I learned from him. True. If you follow keenly Emmanuel TV, yes. you see what is happening there. It's giving back to True. the people. And uh, how can you really live with a person who has nothing to eat? For me, maybe God might bless me with a kilo of unga during Christmas. Yes. And my colleague outside there might not be privileged to have that food. True. So it's about sharing. I share the little I have. It's not because I have more. Really? It's because I have to share the little I have. Just put a smile on the face of your friend. True. It's not a must that you have to be a member of our church, Restoration Harvest Mission. No. We go outside there to the needy of the neediest in the community and try to reach out to them and bless them True. with the little we have. And this is what I want to challenge all of us. You should not wait for donors to come all the way from the UK, from the US, to support and stand with us. You have a role to play. What have you done as a person? So that maybe by the time well wishes come, they find that you've also done something. So as a church, Restoration Harvest Mission, we do it because of the love. Great. And that is why you see, most of the time, you see me writing, let love lead. True. Because if love does not lead you, then you will brag on what you True. give. True. Remember the woman in the Bible who only gave a few coins. And Jesus said, she has given more. You know, God is not interested 
with the millions you have. He is interested in the manner in which you give. give. So the manner in which you give attracts God. True. It, it, it attracts God in the sense that God will see what you are doing and he will bless you even more. Very true. So, and I, I love that because, and I, and I really challenge my friends outside there. You can do it in your own way. True. And we can be able to help our people. Thank you. Asante Sada. Now, let, let's also again engage the online guys because I don't want them to feel Nikama we are leaving them behind. Uh, as you are waiting, because I know we have an announcement. You have a very big announcement you want to do today. And uh, I think most of the guys are glued to that. Uh, if you can go where we were the other time. Abraham. 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 No, no. On the Abraham side. Yes. Hapo. When Hosea said, one of the solid and humble man of God of our time, may God always uh, to abide with you. Uh, it is true that this world restores hope to many that God will be good to you still live. Nduguben, this is now your area people. Nduguben is from Lokichar. He's saying, I'm leaving testimony for Dr. Malcolm. And then you have uh, Princess, Pri is this Pinches or Princess? Pinches Monkey saying, great show, blessings, blessings. You have Vinaditia, the epitome of a true leader. You have uh, General Lokirion just what we saying, Malcolm, happy to have came with this scholar from same area. He inspires a lot. Then you have Susan Arot, we saying, God bless you, great man of God. Joseph Ekali say, Lochen, that is your eloquent in law greet him so i'm told to greet you thank you uh, you know your wife is a sister to us <laughs> <laughs> so now you have jonathan kibetu is saying watching live from newcastle united kingdom of product of lord were mixed and then you have uh, uh, benedict Tekiru is saying i was brought up by dr malcolm lochodo before i joined college god bless you baba you have Paul uh, Ipolot following my legend, Dr. Malcolm, Mr. Ip. I don't know that is your, uh, that is your code name. Then you have Che Gemboaz who is saying, this guy is great. I am worth subscribing to his ideologies. Amen. And then you have Abu Sudaib following live from the venue. That's my dad. Amen. Asante Sana. Then you have Connie Cornelius are saying a good guy. You have Ejore Paul watching from Napusmoru. Good move, Dr. Malcolm. We are proud of you. Keep up, Daktari. Then you have Eddie Amanik. Eddie Amanik is saying, I booked him long ago for my wedding. Summons, great man of God. Somebody has booked you for a wedding, someone. <laughs> then you have, uh, the game is about doctor. The game is about, and doctor is putting out some sense here. Oh God. Then you have Hosea again. Who is saying the allegation that the late T.B. Joshua from Nigeria was one of your very close friend until his death. Members of your church united and other denomination in Nigeria to mourn the man of God. Are this allegation true? I think we've also talked about that. If you can get time and talk about that. Let's, let's put it a stop from there so that Dr. gets time also to digest easy my comments. Thank you very much. Uh, I really want to appreciate our viewers. Thank you guys from Napusimoru, Lokichar. I can see many of you there, Lodua. Um, Others in Castle Pier. There, Trukana West, Trukana East, Loima, where I, I took one of your beautiful daughters. Yes. Who is now my wife, and I have in laws here. Yes. And uh, I really want to thank all of you for uh, watching, and, uh, and I want to ask you to continue watching. I just want to allude to one thing that's been mentioned there. Yes. It's, not, um, it's not the way people think about. It's not an allegation. Mm -hmm. Prophet T.B. Joshua is a man of God. Yes. A man with a reputable character. That God gave him the vision to be his servant. And by the time he left this earth, he left a legacy. And he True. kept on saying, do something that will outlive your lifespan. True. And this is one thing he did that outlived his lifespan. Impacting on people like me and others about love. And this legacy of love will supersede our 
life expectation. True. I am sure one day when I'll be called home, you'll remember of this love. The same way I still remember the love of T.B. Joshua, Prophet T.B. Joshua. And I want to tell you, T.B. Joshua is a man of God. Don't doubt anything. And he said, before he left us, he said, the prayer he was offering online, it's not time bound. True. Even today, if you go and watch the clips of T.B. Joshua and you believe in what you see, you get an impartation. If it is healing, you'll receive that healing. If it is blessing, you receive that blessing. What it takes is for you to believe. All is about believing. If you doubt, nothing will happen to you. True. And me as a son of his, I have no reason to doubt. And I'm not forcing anyone to believe him. True. No, no, no. True, true, you true. have a personal choice. Even salvation is, is a personal choice. You choose to get saved or not to get saved. Very true. And, and I want to challenge people outside there. Don't push people to get saved. Don't push your children to be saved. If they want to be saved, let them be saved. If they choose not to be saved, just leave, to, leave them alone. Mm -hmm. God is the one to convict them to get saved. True. That's all. Asante sana. Now, Daktari, on your career, you've touched the humanitarian sector. You've been with the NGO world. We also told you are a part of the former Nanox government the TCG, Trukana County government, that you got an opportunity to become the chief, chief officer for health. How was the experience? Let's start from there. Now that you got a job back home, because after that, Tunajo Imambo CASPR, you also applied for it. And uh, I'm happy, out of the 5,000 applications, you came top 200. Then from top 200, you came to top 20. All these people, all the 4,000 applications, you are among the top 20. And uh, we, are, we, we don't know what happened, and we don't want to know what happened. Uh, but I've been getting inboxes. People are telling me, uh, we wish uh, Dr. Atuguzia Kidogo on the CAS application thing. Karibu. Yeah, um, surely I was so privileged to have served in uh, His Excellency Governor Nanox government, and I'm proud to have served in his government. I waited for more than eight years. I you know I always tell people I'm the senior most hustler in this <laughs> city of Lodwa. Yeah. And, uh, and being a senior hustler, it was really a reward for a senior hustler to have been given a job <laughs> to serve in Nanox government because... Um, since devolution, I was in this county, and I never got a chance to serve in, in, in Trukana County. It was my prayer that I get a chance to serve in Trukana County okay. government. And when that time came, I served. I was given to serve in an Ox government. Although I served the shortest, I might be the shortest uh, chief officer who served in that government. I only served for <laughs> 10 months. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I'm so proud to have served for 10 months because I think... I left a legacy. I left at the time when they needed me most. Wow. And it's always good to leave when they need you most. True. Don't leave when you, when you have outlived your, your lifespan. When people now start to see that you're becoming a burden to them. Leave at the peak of your career. And I'm really so happy that uh, it came a time when I had to leave at the peak of my career. Mm -hmm. And I want to really to appreciate all the community in the Ministry of Health whom I worked with. I worked with very eloquent and diligent, educated men and women in the Ministry of Health. Wow. We have the best doctors. Let me tell you, sometimes people do not understand this. They, ask, they tell me, now if we go to LCRH, we might not be able to get services. I tell you, go to that LCRH, you'll get the best doctors. They are there. If you find some of them, they are not here, they are getting their locum in other hostels. And you get there to MTRH, you'll meet your own doctor from Trukana County. You'll meet them there. You True. go to Topil Hostel, you'll meet them there. So what makes you leave Trukana and go to Topil? What makes you leave Trukana and go to MTRH? And yet these services are here. So let's give them a chance. And that is one thing that I did. Making sure that we get the right services, get the right skills at the right place. And I'm happy... The team is outside there and they are still working. I am happy because these gentlemen and women who are outside there, they don't shy off. 
In fact, we differed with some of them, and I like it. And uh, we agreed with some of them, and I liked it, and we had to move on. And uh, I really appreciate working in the Minister of Health. Asante. And uh, we, I did my best. Now, you've just talked about uh, the car story. <laughs> <laughs> This is a very interesting area. Yes. I, I did apply like any other person. Like any other Kenyan. Like any other Kenyan. Yes. Because now it was not about Turkana County. True. And I'm proud that I represented Turkana County very well. Because um, from the 5,000, I happen to be among the ones who have been shortlisted among the 200. True. And from the 200, I managed to be in the panel and I was interviewed. Uh, when I was interviewed... I, I am one man who is so much confident of myself because I know myself. I always tell my friends and colleagues that I don't fail in interviews. That one you need to take to the bank. You are good in interviews. I am, I am good in the interviews. Wow. Whether you like it or not, whether you agree with me or you don't uh, agree with me, but I want to tell you that is Malcolm. And I know myself. You put me outside there, I will represent myself. And when I don't get a chance or I'm not the candidate, I always take pride in it. I always say thank you very much. It was not my day. Tomorrow is my day. True. There is always tomorrow in me. That is why you see me when I lose out in something, I always move on. I don't pick a grudge with anyone. I don't even go pointing fingers. And I you don't, don't get stuck. I don't get stuck there. I just move with my life. And that is me. I think you might have watched me, my steps. And I want you to emulate my steps. Don't dwell on your past. True. Because it will always bog you down. Move on and then there is always tomorrow. I want to tell you, my friends who are outside there, there is always tomorrow. Very true. Now, Daktari, I love the fact that Tukanas celebrate you. And uh, they take you as their leader, as their father, as their brother. Now that all this has happened, today so many people have known a lot about you. Your education level, how you came up to be, how you worked, how you've helped, how you're trying to mentor more. There's an announcement that you want to give out. You want to talk about Something that I think most people might take it positive. Kuna wala watu enye mungu ama nisujini shetani mawa block. Anything good, they will always fight. Uh, but I'm happy uh, it doesn't come on your end. Now, how I wish, Daktari, how I wish, on a personal level, this is my opinion. How I wish you would have got a job at the national level. Because if we look at the politics of our day to day, we only have two people who are representing Trukana on the highest end, whereby one is the PS and the new CAS. And then you have Nano. We only have three. Our representation at the national level is poor. Is very poor, Daktari. How I wish, on my own level, how I wish you got an opportunity or you got a chance to serve there. And I pray, and I pray that maybe an opportunity will come and you be given that opportunity. But before we do that, because I know my technical guys, it's like they want to do something. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. How will you react to that? Let's, let's go politics, Kidogo, to our representation at the national level. Yeah, um, thank you. I think we are, we are not yet there. I think we need more Trukanas at the national level. And uh, I really want to pray that uh, God will hear us, that we have more Trukanas at the national level. Only having three, um, I think in my view we are not well represented. They might not be able to carry all our baggage with them. And uh, we, uh, by, from where I'm seated, yes. I wish them all the best. I know all these three uh, gentlemen who are outside there. Yes. They are very good people. 
I have very good rapport with all of them. The PS uh, Joffrey is my personal friend. Yes. And uh, and I really um um he's also a cousin, a decent cousin of mine. Many uh -huh. people do not know this. Uh -huh. And uh his excellence in Anok being my former boss. Yes. I I really love him and I wish him all the best where yes. he's seated. And uh, and uh, and I know he will do more for the Trucanes. Now that we have uh, a colleague uh, who is um Honorable Odepe, yes. who is the new cast, uh, he's a new baby in the bracket, and we wish him well. And by the way, many people do not know this, Lodepe is my court, is my classmate. We were together in Katilo Boys uh. before I left Katilo Boys to, to Majimasuri High School. Okay. That's where I went for my high school, I finished there. But we were all the same in the same class, from Form 1 to Form 2. Wow. Then I left in Form 3 uh, to Majimasuri High School. So he's my colleague, so we know each other in the religious sector. Is is a is a pastor like me. Uh -huh. He served as a missionary. He's a well-known missionary in Turkana County. So I wish him well, and uh, I think uh, with him also outside there, he will be able to to help us and boost the numbers. And uh, we also have a good number of um, MPs who are outside there. The current chairman of the caucus, um, His Excellency in the, uh, Nanok yes. Daniel Nanok Epuyo, yes, a very good man. Mualimu uh, is my good friend. And, and I really wish him well. And, uh, and I know with Mwalimu there, uh, many things will, be, will move, True. will start rolling. Mm -hmm. Because he's one man, uh, when you talk about Trukana, he has a Trukana attack. And we now have a very eloquent, one of our own uh, women, rep uh, women representative, representative. Um, by the name Ishu. Ishu. Uh, she's a very astute uh, leader. True. And I can tell you, she's a leader of our time. Yes. And uh, this is the people we need to watch. We really need to look at them. Very and we really need to look at them because they're going to represent us very well. Yes. And, and just little because uh, Sultan has told me to touch on politics. I have a political background. Few people know about this. Mm -hmm. I, I once vied as an MP in Turkana South during my heydays. Okay. And, uh, and I lost to Nanok. Just what Nanok? Just what Nanok. Wow. Yeah, by then it was Turkana South. The, the uh, greater Turkana South. Yes, the Mali to Vurutiabana. <laughs> yeah, then, uh, he, became, he became the MP for Trukana South. Imagine. And then the, 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 the outgoing MP for Trukana South, who is now the senator, Honorable Lomenen. Lomenen. Lomenen is, is actually my brother. Wow. You people do not know this. A few guys in this room know about this. Okay. It's my brother because we grew up together. Wow. We lived in the same house. Wow. It's when you hear him saying, Lachodo is my brother, he's not joking, he's serious. He's my brother. Wow. So we live together. Uh, the current MP for Trukana South, Honorable Dr. Namoit. Yes. Namoit, his father, was my friend and my teacher, my high school teacher. Wow. So we all come from the same village. You, and have, we know a each other. you so have a good chain of politicians. We, we, we are there. So I wish them well, well and, and I know with them we can be able to move to Trukana uh, where it's supposed to be. The only thing that I just need to touch a little bit, because I see guys are still organizing themselves, Yes. is that uh, we need peace. Trukana needs peace. It needs leaders, peace. Leaders really need to tone down. They need to tone down on the rhetorics and start serving people. Yes. We need service delivery. We are not interested in the rhetorics. We are interested in service delivery. Very true. So I, I really pray that they humble themselves and listen to one another. We might differ in terms of opinion. Yes, it's okay. It does not mean because I am your leader... I say yes to everything to you everything. say. No 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 no, 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 no. We have to differ because we all chakula ikitengenezwa mapishi ni tofauti tofauti. Kweli. Kwa hivyo tukubali ya kwamba mapishi ya mwingine na mwingine hayatakuwa sawa. Kweli. Kwa hivyo tukubali mapishi hayo jinsi yalivyo. Yes. Thank you. Asante sana. Now, I am seeing there is something wase wana letter. Uh, uh, as we are waiting for this to be set up, Let's go online, Kidogo. And I think it's here already. Uh huh. Trend online, Kidogo. Let's see, let's see uh, what people are saying online. Then you have Hosea. Let's start with Hosea. Let's start with Hosea. Hosea says, Love to humanity. Uh, love to humanity is love to God. And love to God is love to humanity. Amen. Then you have uh, one Connie Cornelius is saying, by the fact that you go to be shortlisted to cast positions, says a lot about your conviction and your zeal to achieve more. 
by the grace of the Almighty, you are going places, sir. And then you have uh, Nyang Lochezu saying, a man with big heart, with a lot of love, with always ready to help the needy, with valuable goods that are valuable to him, as he has said, I'm a testimony to that. He raised me up as his own. He impacted my life positively by teaching me how to hustle through technical course which I am earning a living to death. Long live you, dad. It's because of you that I am known as Plumber Dan. Asante sana. Uh, Ian Lomili saying, Dr. Malcolm is one of the genius we have in Trukana. Kudos to him. Then you have Faith Lomuria who is saying, God bless you, man of God. I'm also blessed following. That is Moses Lopeyok. Then we go uh, we go to a person called Ediang Turkana. We were with him yesterday. Uh, following from Kana Moods, I like the spirit that is in Dr. Malcolm. He is among the people who I am following their footsteps. I am praying for him. May God bless him and his ministry. Asante sana. Uh, mungu wa mkubu, mungu wa makubwa na mapana. Uyo ni Eddie Angturkana. We were with him yesterday. Hilda Brand is saying, Dr. Malcolm is a man of high integrity. Then you have Nangole Joshua who is saying, Dr. Malcolm is genius, a man with a big heart, ready to give you guidance at any time you need him. Asante Sara. Do you have any more? Those are now. Now, Dr. Ari, you see? More love. People are talking positive about you. Positive. People are seeing you, Daktari. People, you've helped many. When yata uachui, when yata uasemi majina yao, they are here. They are talking. That is a blessing. To me as an individual today, any person will ask me about Dr. Malcolm. I'll always refer them to this. I'll tell them I don't need to talk. Mutasema labda mina msifu. Nendeni mutafte clip. You'll see everything you want to know about Dr. Malcolm. Daktari, we are here now. Yeah, thank you very much. First of all, I am really humbled with your comments. Asante. And uh, I do not, I have nothing to give to offer back to you. But just to tell you, thank you very much for loving me. And uh, I will always continue to love you. I might not be able to know you by name, but I know the God whom I serve will always bless you and will always provide for you. I long really that day when I can be able to just to meet you and talk to you, just to, to, to have a word with you, have a cup of coffee with you. When you see me around, just pop in. Just come and say hi. And, and uh, we, we will always be there to talk. And uh, where, I am, where I am weak, you are strong. And where you are strong, I am weak. True. That is my philosophy. Wow. I believe that everyone has got some level of strength yes. and weakness. And I know in my weakness, and I know in my weakness, you can offer your strength. Yes. And in your, in your weakness, I can offer my strength. So let's complement each other because that's what we call love. Thank you. Now, Asante, back to this. Yes. This is now the, the, the greatest announcement that everyone is waiting. Yes. And uh, it's called a walk of faith is a walk for peace. 367 kilometers. In the book of Romans chapter 12 verse, um, verse 18. 18. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, you live at peace with everyone. Let love lead. Brothers and sisters, this is an announcement from your brother in the Lord. The Lord has burdened me. He's given me a burden. And it is not something that just began today. It's something that began almost last year. When the Lord spoke to me and told me, move from this place and go to a place called Napetum and pray. I asked God, why Napetum? Napetum is a very dangerous zone. I can't go there. People are being killed. The soldiers are being killed there. I do not have a gun. How do I go there? Who will protect me? I ignored that call. Mm -hmm. 
came this year January, the Lord again spoke to me. And this time he told me, go and preach peace to my people. Tell them that we need to make peace. We love one another. We need to cherish one another. Without peace, there shall be no development. I ask God, why me? Why me of all the people? Why should I go to these places where it is insecure? I have a little bit of a security background. So when I assess the situation, it's a place that I might not wish to go. But now, in February, the 9th of February, this year again, he told me, now walk. And he gave me this word, walk of faith. Walk of faith. He gave me that word, walk of faith. I said walk of faith. Yes, it's a walk of faith because I am taking you to that area because of faith. If you have faith in me, then pick your bag and walk. Then it became clear to me. I had other plans in my mind because I have, I have a, we have a church of God that requires to be rebuilt. Okay. As human, I felt it was time for me to go and raise money to build a church. The Lord told me no. What I want you to do is to go outside there, tell people of my love, and tell them that I want them to make peace. Our brothers from West Pokot, our brothers from Turkana, it is time for us to make peace. It's time for us to start talking to each other and make peace. There are people in West Pokot who are peace-loving. There are people in Turkana who are peace-loving. Not true. everyone you see on the road is an enemy. They are not your enemy. God has a purpose to put us there as a people and we need to make peace. That's why it, is, it says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, you live at peace with everyone. Not a few, but with everyone. So, this is a call. But the journey has just begun. And this is the call now. That a journey will begin from Turkana County to all the way through West Pokot County, Transoya County, up to Wasinigishu County. Then we shall have a prayer day in Wasinigishu County, and then we tell God, thank you for having protected his children on the way. Along the way, we will be ministering to the people. We will be going to the cross. We will sleep there. We will eat there. We don't have sponsors, but God will provide. We will walk along that route. If you meet us on the way, give us water. If you meet us on the way, feed us. There's no one who's going to feed us if it's not you. Drivers are crying every day. Passengers on this road, they are crying every day because they are being killed. I am just calling my brothers and sisters because I know there are brothers and sisters from West Pokot who are watching us today. I am begging you, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, just put that gun down. Put it down and let's embrace peace. I will come to you and I want you to come to me because we need to make peace. Our children have to go to school. Our animals have to go to dressing land. I am asking you, my brothers and sisters, come down from the hills, come to the plains so that we can reason together and make peace. You have freedom to live in Turkana and we have freedom to live in West Pokot. There are many Turkanas in West Pokot. There are many Pokots in Turkana County and it is us who should now get out of our comfort zone and go and talk to our people. And I thank God because he has given us permission. I have actually met the leadership of this county and they have all given me their blessings, including the political class. They have all given me their blessings. And I walk on this road knowing that it's a faith walk and I'm taking a faith walk with a few young men and women who are also willing to join us. It will take us a long time to get there, but we shall get there. Believe me, you. No riding on the bus. No moving with vehicles. We will walk. It's called a walk of faith. So from today, on Thursday, I will invite all of you to come when the, His Excellency the Governor, Honorable Jeremiah Lomorukai, will be flagging off this journey on Thursday. Please come and join us. Pray with us and wish us luck as we move on this journey. I welcome all of you. Let's walk with, with, on, uh, with faith. It's a walk of faith because it's a work for peace. May God bless you. Let love 
lead. God bless you all. Asante sana. Now, Daktari, you are planning to walk 367 kilometers. This is something that we need people to come out clear. What to do? Daktari is not using boda boda or a car or a bus. Daktari is planning to walk from Lodwar all the way to Eldoret, right? On foot. Two things, uh, if you've heard what the announcement was all about, two things. Daktari wants to bring peace between the Trukanas and the Pokot. Pokot and other people who are also bordering them on the other side. That is the mission. Two, uh, Daktari wants to fundraise for a church. They want to build a church. They want to build a church maybe in Trukana and other church maybe in West Pokot. If, if, if that is what I'm getting, Daktari. But two, the most important thing that all of us need to know is peace. Any person out there who wants to walk, who wants to volunteer, to walk from Lodwa all the way to Eldoret, please join Daktari. And that is going to change the whole perception of Trukana. Daktari, nobody has ever done this. I don't know how prepared are you for this. Thank you very much. I just want to correct uh, Sultan. Yes. Um, some years back, one of my friends, a man I respected most, may his soul rest in peace, called Professor Lokapen. He traversed from Turkana to Baringo. Wow. They call it, I think, um, a race for peace or something like that. So he even went further than I am planning to do. I think I'm just stepping on the footsteps of those who went ahead of me. Okay. And I am doing it right now because it is a calling. I just want to make this clear. I am not fundraising for the church. That was my intention okay. as human. I wanted to raise money. for The church really needs money. I know very well. Our tent is, is in Tatas. We need to build that church. But this time around, the Lord told me, it's not about raising money for the church. Okay. It's about walking for peace. So I am outside there, beseeching you as a brother and a sister to come and join me in this journey to walk for peace. And the Nyangalima has just asked me, Sultan, that how prepared am I? Yes. I have been prepared for the last one month. You've been... From the time the Lord told me to start moving, I started preparing myself. Because one thing you need to know, is not about Malcolm. It has nothing to do with me. Yes. It has all to do with the one who is sending me. It's and about God. It's about God. It has nothing to do with me. Some friends of mine are asking me, oh, you might not be in your good health. But I'm telling them, it has nothing to do with my health. It has nothing to do with me having not walked even... 50 kilometers. By the way, let me tell you, the farthest I've walked is from Lodwa to Elias Springs. That is 67 kilometers. 67 kilometers. Yes, I have done 67 kilometers. And I have done from Lochuang Kamatak to Napusumoru, where my dad is. That's how many kilometers? It's less than about 30 kilometers. 30, 40. 32 32. Kilometers. Two and fro. That is 64. 64 kilometers. That's the farthest I've ever gone. Now, I am going to walk for 367 and kilometers. What about the insecurity? How are you going to handle that? The one who has sent me yes. will take care of that. You know? Mm -hmm. When Elijah was fighting the prophets of Baal, yes. he knew very well that the prophets of Baal were stronger and powerful. and powerful, but he relied on God. True. And God did it for him. He will do it for me. I that is the that. faith I have. I love so that. if you want to join me, come and we team up together. Let's walk for peace. Let's walk and make sure and ensure that peace will prevail in, on our roads. P peace will prevail in our villages. I am coming to the kraals, my brothers and sisters. I am coming to those kraals and I know where those kraals are. I already have a picture 
of where I'm going. If you tell me to tell you, it's already been drawn by God. My, my journey has already been drawn. It's already been mapped. Wherever I'm passing, it's already been mapped. I will sleep in Trokana Kraus. I will sleep in Pokos Kraus. I will come all the way and have a peace meeting, a peace gathering. At least we will preach to the people along the way and we will tell them the love of Jesus. No lodgings, no what? No lodgings. If you give us a lodging, we shall tell you thank you. Alhamdulillah. Because you've given us a place to sleep. True. We will not refuse. If you give us food, we will appreciate. We will eat your food. I'm not going to call any food condemned food. We will eat any food you give to us. True. If you, whatever you eat, that is our meal that day. So we are coming. If you give us accommodation in your houses, we will sleep there. If you don't give us a place to sleep, we will sleep in churches. Mm -hmm. We will sleep in schools. Yes. We will sleep in the mosque. Yes. If I get a mosque, we get a mosque ahead of us, we will sleep in that mosque. True. They are our brothers. We will sleep there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Daktari, as you are winding up, I want you to give us your parting shot. As you are winding up, what is, what after the walk of faith, what is Daktari planning to do the next three years, four years, five years? And for a person out there who wish to know more about Daktari, if you have any social handles, you can also, because a lot of people want mentorship. Everybody wants to be mentored. Most of people are looking up to us, especially on the level you are. People will always want to talk to you. How are they going to see you? Or how, how available are you? Um, I, am, I am always available, and you can find me. In fact, if you walk on the streets of Lodwa, you will always find me. If you come to Kanam Woods, you will always find me. If you want to join a team of people who are jogging on the highway, you will always find me. Just the other day, we were on the highway from here to the university, and I, I interacted with so many people. So for me, I'm always around there, and if you want to find me, come we jog together. Let's go to the gym together, and we will always interact. You'll get to know me better than you'll get to know me when now I, I meet you on official issues. And uh, I am also on, on, on Facebook um, as Malcolm. You can find me on Facebook as Malcolm. If you go to Restoration Harvest Mission Facebook, I'm always active on that page. That's our, our church Facebook account. And, uh, and, and that is where I always interact so much with you. If you are in need of any counseling, if you need any kind of advice, just come and we'll share together. I'm not saying that I have all the answers for you, but I know if we sit together, we will always find a solution of what is ailing you or me. And uh, what I'm going to tell you in this life, let love lead. Without love, we are nothing. You might have all the money with you, but when you don't have love, you are empty. And empty indeed. Let love lead. Asante sana. Thank you so much. Tukimalizia comments enye zimeingia. For those who are joining us now, we've been having a conversation uh, with one and only Dr. Malcolm Charles Lochodo uh, for the last one hour and 33 minutes. We started at around 5.15 uh, as we are winding up. Somebody is saying Dr. Malcolm uh, is a man of high integrity. Then you have Dr. Malcolm is a genius and a man with a big heart, ready to give you guidance anytime you need him. Then you have John Mudoni say, I joined this church because of power of God. I love that Malcolm mtu wa moyo mkubwa. Asante sana. You have uh, Lokirion Josfatu is saying, with all this virtue, uh, the, compassion, the compassion to navigate through major aspects of life, Dr. Malcolm is a good administrator. And I recommend the county boss to utilize his human capital as a resource to, to, to Kana community. Asante sana. You have Walela who is saying, watching from Methiwan City. Uh, Shibibi, Shibake say, wow, let love lead. God bless his people. Then you have Smarton, Smarton Ekai, who is saying MP 2027, Turkana South. <laughs> uh, then you have Edwin Mjumbe. In a way, say, Malcolm is wise. Uh, let love lead. Asante sana. I love you, Dr. and Sultan from Lokichogio. Asante sana. Doctor, 
watu tayari wameanza kusema we ni Are you interested in politics uh, in the near future? I, not now. Um, I've been in that in those terrains before. Yes. For now I just want to concentrate in what God has planted in my heart. I True. have to serve his people. I have to build a church for my Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know it's not about me. When that time comes I'll call you to rally behind me and True. support me. True. But for now my heart is here. Yes. This is what I want. This is what we are doing. Let love lead and let's walk. A walk of faith uh-huh. is a walk for peace. Yes. This is my agenda. And I pray that this becomes your agenda. Thank you. 367 kilometers starting on Thursday. Starting this week Thursday. or next week? This week. The week has just begun. The week has already just Today begun. Today is Sunday. Today is Sunday. The week has begun. True. This coming th- uh, Thursday. Thursday. We will be able to communicate the time yes. when his excellence will be available but it must be in the morning because we have to move very early in the morning. Asante sana. Asante sana daktari. Thank you so much for coming. It's been inspiring. What a story you have. For those who are joining us now, this video is still there. Let the conversation keep on going. Comment, 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 comment. Uh this show has been brought to you courtesy of Kaman Kanamuds, of course. Uh if you've never been to Kanamuds, tafadhali tafadhali come to kwana moods you will get the best coffee you will get the best ice cream you will get the best uh, delicacies whatever what kind of cuisine you want iko kwana moods anytime any day welcome to kwana moods this is where quality meets the eye asante sana that is been our time they call me sultan lola nyangalima until next sunday we are having another story we are bringing another a reportable person next sunday we hope you guys will keep on tuning asante sana la karanoi may god bless you god bless to kana uh, as you as you finish yeah, just Dr. before before we close this show yes just before we close this show i know you've been following me but allow me to break the protocol here yes i know sultana has already finished no no it's okay but let me break the protocols allow me to pray with you Father in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you for this show thank you for Trukana TV and thank you for bringing me on board to be their guest today Father God I commit this journey walk of faith is a walk for peace 367 kilometers Father God lead us guide us speak on our behalf let there be peace Lord once peace prevail we shall rejoice and be glad in you let love lead in Jesus mighty name amen thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much bishop dr malcolm charles lochodo alakaranoi may god bless you may god make this journey for you you a success asanteni sana thank you for tuning in karibuni tena see you next sunday